I'm Brad Ost. I am the Theology and Philosophy Librarian here at Robert W. Woodruff Library, AUC. This is part of several tutorials on Le the Lebronix Digital Library System brought to us by Logos. This software is available only on two computers here in the library in room 202C. Um, we are not allowed to network it, and that's why it's only available on two computers. When you click on the red icon on the desktop here, that's the Logos icon. This is the screen that you're going to come to. We've already done a tutorial for the study passage. Right now we're going to look at the exegetical guide. So if you go up to the menu and go across, you see here exegetical guide. You click on that icon. And what you have here is that work which is going to help you with your Greek and Hebrew words. You can see that you can choose whatever it is that you want to look at when you put your version in. You can see that this is much more limited than the availability of Bibles on the passage guide, but you have all the standard Greek and um, Hebrew lexical aids, plus the King James Version and the New American Standard Version. We're going to leave it on the New American Standard Version. We're going to go ahead and put in John 3.16 here as our test. And what's going to happen is that this is going to go ahead and bring up that passage. It's generating all the helps that are available here. It's going to bring up that passage. And then these words that are highlighted here from that passage, you can see that if you click on one of them, it's going to bring you to that word down below. So we'll wait on that for a while. The second item that you see are grammars here. And these different grammars are going to help you. You can see the name of the grammars, the short syntax of the New Testament Greek, syntax of New Testament Greek by Burton, and different uh, areas within those books that apply to this passage. So if you click on adverbial clauses over on the right-hand side, you can see that it shows John 3.16 right there, and then gives an explanation of the clauses and the adverbial clauses that are available there. You can also, uh, conditional clauses, you can also highlight, cut and paste any of this information and put it in a Word document. If you go down here, then it gets to the real meat, the word by word comparison of all the important words that are in that passage. You could put in as many verses as you want. I just put in the one verse. The more verses you put in, the longer it takes to generate these answers. You have here the word in English, and then uh, God, and then Theos. Um, the Strong's Concordance numbers here. This little chart here is the number of occurrences in the action in, of that word in the New Testament. So if you go ahead and click on it, you can see on the right hand side that it's showing you from the New American Standard. And here it is from the Strong's number 2316, where it is appearing in the other books in the New Testament. If you highlight it, you can see that it's going to um, pulsate for you and then give you the number of times that it occurs. Luke in the New American Standard Bible, 122 times that word theos is going to occur. Underneath the word, you can also see that there are links to different lexical aids that are going to help you here. So if we click on Enhanced Strong's Lexicon on the right-hand side, there it is again, theos 2316. Gives you all the information that Strong's would give you. Um, the NASB dictionaries, go ahead and click on that. And there it is, the New American Standard uh, Hebrew and Aramaic and Greek Dictionary, Theos, God, Divinely God, and gives you the different numbers that are available. There are also more lexical aids, Vine's complete expository of Old and Testament words. And this essentially is what's going to occur on down the line for every important word that's involved. It's going to give you the Greek. It's going to give you the Strong's Concordance. It's going to give you each incidence of that word <clears throat> in the New Testament. Then it's going to give you lexical aids that you can use as well. You can also do this for the Hebrew. So we just don't have to stay in the Greek. We put in Genesis 1, 2, and go to that. There it is, that famous passage, the earth was formless and void. You can see that the grammar has much more occurring here. Um, disjunctive accents here, post-positive, pre-positive. You can go on down, and then you have the word-by-word -word comparison. You have the in the Greek once in the Hebrew once again for earth and all the occurrences in the Old Testament and all the lexical helps that go along with that as well. Other tools you have here, we've already done passage guide, but also there is the verb river. If you click on that, you're going to find your passage up here. It gives you links to the 
either passage or the chapter that you were involved in. It's got us here with the uh, Biblia Hebraica, and that is going to give us the Hebrew. So we are looking for an attribute here. It's going to give us a graph showing in Genesis 1 where the stems, occurrence, persons, how they're involved in the um, whole chapter. So if we click on stem, there it generates the occurrences of verbs in Genesis 1, 1 through 31, by stem, qual, nafal. So there it is all there. Might be very helpful for a, for, for a paper. Or you can go on down for gender, and it's going to, to change every time. Once again, all these are available for cutting and pasting onto a Word document, and that's going to allow you to also to have a citation at the end of that Word document. This is the Lebronics Exegetical Guide.